Norman was born into a family on the 13th of September 1941, daughter of John and Agnes Donahue. Mom was the eldest of six, two sets of twins in the family. She trained in England as a nurse, and when she returned home, she began her career in the maternity unit in the Star Hospital. One fateful night, she met PJ, a local dancer, Ken and Eck, and that was that. They were now married in September of 69. Twins had reappeared again in the family with the birth of Jean and I. Mom was a kind and caring nurse who showed empathy to her patients. Her reputation preceded her, and you knew you were in good hands. By growing up, I lost count of many women who stop her on the street or in the supermarket and hang her for helping deliver their babies. It was only when I became a mother I realised what these women meant and what her strength and experience meant to them. This telescope represents her devotion to nursing care. Years passed, six grandchildren came and they became the new love of her life. She was initially referred to as Cracker by her grandchildren. When she didn't like that, she felt she was old. It progressed to rags. And then as the children became young teens, she was promoted to the title of the Grand Star in the world of Coo. As a grandmother, she cherished her grandchildren and was very proud of all of them. With my three boys, she would regularly ensure the rule of only sweets on Friday was often overruled on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and any other day. She loved the daily visits from Sean's children in the evenings after school and listened to the stories and events of the day. She nurtured, listened, and loved them. As the eldest of her siblings, she cared very deeply all about her brothers and sisters. She enjoyed the daily phone calls to her sisters, Claire and Chris, and her long standing friendship with Mildred. The monthly telephone bills were very long. This family picture represents her devotion to her family. As a person, man was proud in her disposition. She was humble in her approach with her reserved nature. As someone with great integrity, she was a confidant of many, a great listener, wise who understood the importance of trust. In the last few years, age brought medical issues, but she bore her illness with courage and great dignity. All through her life, she maintained a no fuss policy, never complained. Her strength and bravery were limitless in the face of all she suffered. Her faith was her strength in the adversity of her illness. The rosary beads represent her devotion to her family, which are a cornerstone of her life. It is impossible to thank everyone individually, but please accept this acknowledgement of gratitude and sincere appreciation from all our family. We thank you for being with us here today. There were so many people in the last few years or us. In particular, Sean, Yvonne and their children, Mary, Grace and Pierce, who have been constantly there supporting and caring for her and dad. PJ has been a devoted man to her all through their married life, and especially so in the last few years caring for her. Sean has been a devoted son. I want to thank all the carers, and too many names to remember, but especially Marita, Susan, Raid. Cathy, Sienna, Sheila, Breda, Caroline, Audrey, Caroline, These vital supports ensured Mam was able to remain at home where she wished to be. We want to thank Father Casey for this Mass and celebration, the music, and Andy Crone and funeral directors for their professional service and support during this difficult time. Mam, Mother, grandmother, sister, friend, miss you, rest in peace.
Please stand now as we begin our mass. And we gather in the company of, of God, and we gather in memory of Maureen, and we gather to witness the coming together of the two now as we raise Maureen up on our prayers. We will celebrate her life, and we look through her life and her passing and see if we can make a clear image of God and a better value for meaning and substance in our own lives. Let us pray. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Lord God, in whom all find refuge, we appeal to your boundless mercy, grant to the soul of your servant Maureen a kindly welcome, cleansing of sin, release from the chains of death, and entry into everlasting life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated, and we'll have the readings now. First reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to Timothy. As for me, my life has already been poured out as a libation, and the time for my departure has come. I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith. All there is to come now is the crown of righteousness reserved for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me. This is the word of the Lord.
second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children. That is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not been yet revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is, the word of the Lord. Please stand for our gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. You're all very welcome on a cold day and in difficult times. We have to come in here with masks on. We have to separate out as best we can. But I'd like none of that to interfere with the celebration we have this this afternoon because none of that makes is relevant to Maureen and it's about her let her be the center of our thoughts and of our prayers as we lift her up and present her to God I'm listening to Geraldine there as she went briefly through her mother's life I was just impressed by how much was in it it was a very full life um, growing up with her own family the Donohoes up in Crusala then off to England and then particularly her life as a nurse in England and then at home here in Ireland it was a full life and so much of it was good and the people that she cared for and she was well known for caring for people they appreciated it and still do we have our stethoscope here part of her uh, trade the the tools of her trade I got to know Maureen here um, and then coming to church here, except in PJ. And they were very regular, very steady, and very quiet and obtrusive people sitting down here on this side. And then I got to know Maureen even better, I suppose, just watching her at home in, in Newton, especially over the last years when her health failed. And the difficulty was that, I suppose, when her health failed and she was became disabled and further disabled, you, you, you might think that she was diminished as a person. But I think what I saw was the configuration of her inner self coming more and more to the surface 
and in that was very impressive. So that when Maureen wasn't able to do anything, she wasn't able to hold a cup of tea. She was still had her senses about her, she still could talk, ask questions. But so much of the richness of her inner life came to the fore. And I found that very impressive. Geraldine spoke of her there briefly. And she talked about a woman that that bore her her sickness humbly. And that's the way she was inside. But I suppose when life was was cracking along, that didn't come out so much, just didn't have to. And she bore her sickness without blame, and that was part of her nature. Maureen didn't blame people. And the one word I would use to sum up what I saw is the word grace. It's the name of one of the girls here as well. But Maureen was a lady who was blessed with, 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 with grace. Now that's, grace is often, it often comes across as like a commodity, like a substance, like something that did sort of trade. But grace is something that we associate directly with God. It just shines out of God. It sh it's part of what God does in, tr in dealing with us. We sense the grace of God. It's to do with gift. It's to do with loveliness. It's to do with a willingness to come to me and, and, and bless me. And it's very, very acceptable to receive. And I, that's what I saw coming through Maureen Kilkenny. Especially when she couldn't do anything. She could still exude grace. She could still, there was still a possibility of a smile. There was still a searching question that showed she was interested. And there was a comment of some description that would make sense. And I'd like you, I'd like you just to see how we, we try and appreciate that. Because we, work, we, we live in a world where increasingly, if something goes wrong, people try and use it to, put, to make a poor me of the story. Look at poor me. And now somebody help me, and it has to be done for me. And that's that's a trade that goes on everywhere. People people feel hard done by, the claim they're victims, and then let somebody stand up and give me something or do something for me. But Murray never did that. There was never any poor me about her. Instead, she bore it graciously and in a strange sort of a way her disability let loose a gift from within her. Now I'd like you to hold on to that because that's a sort of an elusive thing but that's exactly what Jesus did. When he was shamed and scolded and abused and put down he didn't whinge he didn't threaten, he didn't shout, he didn't roar. He didn't use it for anything like that. Instead, he let his loveliness come out through his suffering. He let his care for other people. He let his willingness to, to complete the Father's will come out through his suffering, which is the most unusual thing to do, and yet that's exactly what he did. In other words, Jesus saved the world, we say, by dying for it. Now, I want you to see something of that echoing in Maureen's life. Because if you're able to recognize that, 
you know that looking at that, you're looking into the mystery of God present within her. And that's what made her and her life with PG over there and her life with her family live. She was devoted to the people around her, for sure. As Jerry said, her family was the rock on which her life was built. And her faith in God then was, the, was what enabled her to, to, to make that and build it up into such a wonderful thing. And that was in difficult circumstances. Really, really hard at the very end. And you know, I wasn't able to see her that much because in the end, there was, as you know, with the, with the restraints of COVID, it wasn't possible to visit. But I, I kept her, the image I had in her of PJ sitting here and Maureen sitting there and the bond between them and how nice it was to visit them and there was always some sort of cheer, some sort of bit of news, some sort of liveliness in the day. It was good to be there. I was never diminished by my visit to see Maureen and PJ. In fact, quite the opposite. I always came away feeling that I had been in some way graced by God. So when we gather, as we do now, to give her to God, we're not sending her away to some unknown or something that where she's a stranger or feels a stranger. But what we're doing is we're we're, 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 we're moving her towards something that's totally familiar and something that she loved and wanted all her life. We're giving her to God and God is going to take her home, to his home. And that's going to be so wonderfully familiar for Maureen because it will resemble her own home. Because as she opened the door of her life, to let God come into her home and be in her family. It won't be anything strange for her to go now to God and be in God's home and God's family. And she straight away recognize where she's going and what's happening. And that will fill her with joy. And some of that joy will surely trickle back into the lives of PG and the family here and fill them with peace. These are our thoughts. This is our hope. Please stand now and join me in prayer. And if those who are going to do the prayers of the faithful, can you please come forward? Who's first? <coughs> Granny has now reached the shore of eternity. She fought the good fight. She kept the faith. May she now receive her award. Lord, hear us. For Granny, who baptism, she was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints, Lord, hear us. Uh, for Granny's family and friends, whose lives she enriched so deeply, and who are gathered here today in remembrance of her life, Lord, hear us. For all who took care of the sick, especially those who looked after Granny in her illness. In particular, we remember the one from home health that made Granny's journey more comfortable and supported her family so well, that they may be rewarded for their goodness to her. Lord, hear us. For all our deceased relatives and friends, that they may see God face to face in the kingdom of heaven. Lord, hear us. And we raise up all our prayers 
for more reading. I don't want to pray for all our faith in the part of this week in the month of, of November. And we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, for these and all our prayers, we ask that you would receive them through Christ our Lord. Please be seated, and those who are bringing up the gifts from the back, we will please go to the back table. Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And Father, we give you thanks and praise. Thank you for Maureen, for her life, for the richness of her life, for her home and family, for her faith in you, for the way you were able to be with her, living in her and shining out through her, all through her life. And we give her to you now with all our prayers through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim...
I invite you to kneel down now for a Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. We celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer to you, Lord God, Almighty Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope and Martin our Bishop and all the clergy and religious and all your people, Lord, especially we pray for those who suffer and suffer greatly in terminal illness. Remember your servant Maureen, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that she may be united with your son in a death she was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And Jesus taught us that God is our loving Father. We stand, we lift our hearts and we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await in joyful hope the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world of mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world of mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. <coughs> And blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof. <clears throat> so we should be healed.
And we take the, the coffin from the back and place it at the front here. And we're going to have a reflection, I think. Somebody going to do a reflection? Some of the girls, yeah. She is gone. You can shed tears that she is gone, or you can smile because she has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that she has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see her, or you can be full of love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember her and only that she is gone, or you can cherish her memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you can do what she would want. Smile, open your eyes, love, and go on. to Maureen we will remember what, who she was and the life she had and then give thanks for all that she leaves behind all that she contributed to the richness of our lives as we stand today please stand for our final prayers Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Maureen. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. He incense the coffin and sprinkle it with holy water.
soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to our aid, hasten to meet our angels of the Lord. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Maureen in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Maureen in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. In peace now, let us take our sister to her place of final rest. And uh, the cemetery is out and round the road, so we'll be walking, or you can travel in your car if you want to, round and up the hill behind. Thank you. Just. Yeah. 